Hey guys, this is Sean. Let's talk about the Ember concurrency today. I'm assuming you have basic knowledge of Ember.js already. If not, check out my beginner's tutorial. I will put the link on the top right corner as well as the description down below. All right, glad to see you still here. Let's get started. I will quickly go through what is Ember concurrency, why we use it. After that, I will show you some real example to demonstrate how to use it. First of all, what is Ember concurrency? It's an Ember add-on that makes it easy to write concise, robust, and beautiful asynchronous code. But why we need to use it? JavaScript already have things like promises and generators to handle asynchronous function. But Ember concurrency has something more. It provides us a useful decorator task. It's not like the regular promises. It can do more stuff. For example, cancel the incomplete asynchronous call. It can also expose the underlying state like whether the task is running or idle or it's already completed. And one of the most useful stuff, it's the modifiers, like drop, restartable, etc. It can prevent you to send out unnecessary asynchronous call or imagine in the real app to prevent unnecessary HTTP requests. And I will demonstrate that later. Now it's time to open my VS Code and show you how to use Ember concurrency. Here we're at an empty directory. We do ember init to initialize our project. Let me split the terminal and get our app up and running by ember s. And go to localhost 4200 to make sure the app is running okay. Since we're going to handle a synchronous call, let's create a basic asynchronous function, get random number. Here we're using the native JavaScript promise and resolved a random number between zero to hundred after a thousand milliseconds. And I also add a console lock before the timeout to see if the function get called. Now I need to generate a new component. We do ember g component dash gc and the component name. The gc means Glimmer component. The first example here, we're going to write a component without ember concurrency to see how ember.js handle asynchronous functions and also as a comparison to the Ember concurrency add-on later. In the template, we add a button to generate a random number once we click it. So back to our JavaScript, we will need to import our action decorator and finish our action function. Here we directly call the async function get random number from util and it use .lem to get the response after promises being resolved. In order to display the result, we need to add a track to property display number and assign the result to that property. Now let's add example one component inside application.hbs and see how it goes. We click the button and you can see in the console, the async function got called, but there's nothing shows up. Looks like we forgot to put the display number into our template and let's add it back. Now it's working, you can see the number shows up after one second. Here we can do some improvement, which add a loading state. We're going to add a tracked property called is loading and set to true after action called and set to false when promise resolved. Don't forget to add those inside the template with the if else block. Let's play with it. And it looks good. And we can improve our code a little bit further, which Ember also support the native async and await syntax. We can add async keywords in front of the action function and using await to wait for the full response of that promise. After save it, everything works as expected. Now it's time to play with Ember concurrency. Since it's an Ember add-on, we can directly use Ember CLI command ember install ember concurrency to install this library making sure to reboot our application after we install a new dependency. And we need to create a new component to demonstrate the differences. Let's call it example two. And we copy over all the code inside example one to here. And add a new component into our page. Just a quick test to make sure everything works well. Now let's go to JavaScript and import the task decorator from the Ember concurrency. 
and write a new asynchronous function by a native generator with text decorator. And move all the code inside the action into the text function and replace the await to yield because this is inside the generator. The next step is to call this task function by this.getNumberTask.perform inside the action, then save the changes. And everything works well. You might wondering the only things that this action did is to call this task. Can we just remove it and call the task directly? The answer is yes. Here we need to use a helper called perform so that we can directly execute the task function inside the template. Let's test it again. Works well. Besides, we can optimize a bit more by removing all those tracked properties. As I mentioned before, Ember concurrency exposes many underlying states which can be used directly. The its loading can be replaced by task it's running, and we can get value from latest task by task.last.value. Let's try again. The loading state works fine, but we didn't see our result, which means we need to go back to our JavaScript and return the value inside the test function. And now we're good. The next thing I want to show you is the modifiers. We will need to create a new example component to demonstrate that. You create example 3 component and copy over the lines from example 2 and making sure it's working fine. Let's quickly go through all the modifiers inside the M concurrency. They're restartable, in queue, drop, and keep latest. First, let's talk about the restartable. The test will restart if it's not fully finished yet, which means it only keeps the last call. Second, in queue means all the trigger tasks will run in sequence, that the second task will execute it after the first one is finished, and the third one will follow the second one. Next is the drop modifier. It will drop all the following tasks if the first task is not finished yet. The new task will only be executed if first task is finished. Last one, keep latest. This one is similar with the drop modifier, which drop all the following tasks if the first task is not finished. But there is a, an exception, which the latest task will wait till the first task to finish and then get executed. Now let's back to our code base, lock the return value within the test function so we know whether the async call is finished. And we can experiment that on the regular task without modifiers, you can see all the synchronous call got triggered and returned. Well, let's try out the first modifier, restartable, by putting restartable equal to true inside the task decorator. You can see we click the button three times. It generated three times, but only the last one got returned. The another way to use restartable modifier is directly using the restartable task decorator. And it works the same. Next modifier, in queue. Similarly, we put in queue equal to true inside the text decorator. You can see the second text executed after the first one, and third text is after the second task. We also have decorator called in queue task, and it works the same. Well, let's try out a drop modifier. Also put the drop equal to true inside the text decorator. You can see we only got the one pair of locks because the tasks triggered after the first text are dropped. Also, the drop task decorator works the same here. Cool. The last modifier is the keep latest. Let's put that in the text decorator. And we can see there is a two pair of locks, which is only the first one and the last one. And we can also try keep latest task decorator. It's working as expected. Next topic, cancellation, which we can manually cancel the asynchronous call by Ember concurrency. Let's create a new component, example four, and then copy over from the example three.
And here we add a new button to manually cancel the task. And we need to add an action here and invoke the task.cancelAll. So you can see if I click cancel before the task finished, nothing will return. And if we don't click cancel, the random number will return as expected. The last topic we're going to talk about is the error handling. We can add a try catch block. And whenever there's a random number larger than 50, we throw an error. And we can add a track the property called has error to virtualize it. So here we click the button at get 59, which has an error, and we'll see an oops here, and then click again, 90, also error, 66, another error, and now 13, there's no error, and number shows up properly. Ember concurrency also exposed the error state, so we don't need a track the property and try catch block. We can just simply use the task dot dot is error inside the template. So 78, we got oops error. And 15, we are good. You can see the error log here is because we didn't catch the error in the code. So it's going to show up in the console. That's pretty much about this video. Hit like button if you love it. Subscribe if you want more. Let me know what you want to know about Amber in the comment section. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.